to please design responsively. <laughs> um, and so you're not scrambling. Don't worry. These will be up at speakerdeck.com slash taps. Um, actually, they're already up there. Um, so, but don't look ahead. There's a test. And you have to actually take, no, just kidding. Um, so all my, all my slides will be there, including all of the uh, text and the links uh, will be in the description below. Okay, so first, all right, who is this random person talking? First, this is me without a bow tie, all right? I'm Taps on Twitter. Um, my name is Tracy Apps, and my last name really is Apps. <laughs> I get asked that all the time. Everyone's like, oh, that's cute. I'm like, no, it's my name. I wish I'd trademarked it years ago. I would never have to work again. Anyway, um, I, my degree is in art. So I was, I'm really a designer, yet I bought an HTML book in 96 and started like hand coding an Angel Fire website. Anyone remember Angel Fire? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. My people. Um, because I was like, oh, this is really cool. I can put stuff on a home page on the World Wide Web. This is amazing. Um, so, and I just never looked back since. Um, and been working with WordPress for many, many years. I now am self-employed and do mostly WordPress development, some design, some photography, some video storytelling, some consulting, etc. But enough about me. Who do we all have in the room? So who would consider themselves more of a designer or a wannabe designer? OK, we got a couple. Cool. Uh, how about like developers or wannabe developers? OK. How about elder? There you go. <laughs> this is good. Everyone should learn something. I'm not going to go too technical. Um, I'm going to do more overarching kind of themes. So I hope everyone can gain something out of this. First off, what is this word responsive? It's very much a buzzword. Um, but Wikipedia defines it as a web design approach aimed at crafting sites to provide an app, blah, 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 blah. Um, it basically makes your site look good in all devices, whether it be a 30 inch, 40 inch, 50 inch monitor down to the mobile phones and tablets and such that we have, which is basically the coolest thing ever. <laughs> this is an example. This is uh, fistofangst.com, which is actually a domain I own, because. Um, all of these is the same website, yet it has three very distinct views and layouts. So basically, this is the code is exactly the same. But then the magic happens in the style sheets. Um, well, if this looks like jargon, don't worry about it. It's really if the screen is larger than 280 pixels, then do this stuff. If it's larger than 768, then do this stuff. If it's even larger than that, do this other stuff. And there's so many different things that you can look for with media queries. This is just a, a sampling of these. Um, not only can you do width and you know, max or min width, which is the most common, because you think about your devices, they get smaller and smaller. Um, you can do portrait and landscape. So you can determine if the ratio is larger on the width or the height. Um, you can get all sorts of crazy things. Um, color, like is it a color monitor? Like who doesn't have a color monitor? But that, that's really cool. Um, and not only that, you get a lot of really great um, accessibility features. Uh, Braille, um, print, like print style sheets for when just print it out. You don't want to print a black background. You just want the content. All of these things, very, very exciting. OK, it's a lot of stuff. But what does it actually mean to design responsibly? Let's actually kind of break it down into more of how do we even get started. You can Google all of the terminology and all of the code for it. But let's look at how do I actually get started in doing this without having to know all of that, all those pieces. So here's 10 tips. This is number one. Actually use your mobile device. 
Use it to like navigate through websites. Use it to buy tickets to something. Like actually use it and then make notes of what frustrates you and what you had a good experience with and what like, ah, oh, this just, I don't know why, but this just doesn't work really well. I can't click on it, you know, it's too small. Like how am I supposed to type in there? Make note of that because your users are gonna probably have the same annoyances and frustrations. So if you don't actually use your device, you won't know about those things. And here's a really fun thing. Notice how you hold your device when you're using it. And then notice what happens when you change how you hold it and what hand you hold it in. And notice what parts of the, the device are really hard to reach with your thumb if you're doing one-handed. And notice all those little blind spots. And then when you change it, the blind spots move. And then when you have a new phone like the iPhone 6 and it's larger and now I can't reach that top navigation bar. So it sounds daunting, but it's a really great puzzle. Think of it in that way, because puzzles are fun. Number two. Uh, killed trees, or I mean, you can actually use just a, a chalkboard or you know dry erase board. But my favorite tool for web design is sticky notes, sticky notes and sharpies, because how great is this? Like I, what I do is I take each element or each feature of what I'm designing, or the website or the mobile app or whatever it is, I take each feature and I break it down into a sticky note, and then I can move it around. I can see how it's going to look with it this wide or this wide. And I can do all sorts of crazy things just with sticky notes, not even touching code. You don't even need a computer. You can just do this on the train, whatever. It's really cool. And if you want to get technical, there's now more and more of these actual apps that you can use. Um, I use this AppSeed, which look, hey, it's a Canadian company. It was a, it was a Kickstarter campaign. and. It allows you to draw on these uh, templates, and then you take a picture on your phone, and it makes it into an interactive uh, prototype. Right? Isn't that cool? Yeah. Come on, that's really cool. Um, and like sketchbook apps, so I can just be on my tablet and just draw. I mean, that's really the best solution for kind of really starting this and starting to think in all sorts of realms of mobile, tablet, desktop, thinking on the move. This one's my favorite. Just get away from a computer. We're so tied to our computers, and we just get stuck. I am trying to make it my goal to make everyone buy a hammock <laughs> and write it off as a business purchase. I'm serious. Like, hammock coding or hammock designing has just inspired so many of my designs. I'm just, this is my backyard. I'm like, I'm working on a website right now. Like that, I mean, it just, you will never imagine how many things that you're gonna like be inspired or how much things are gonna, how many things are gonna influence you um, and affect you just by like, you know, seeing a sunset. Like, oh, wow, that's a really cool thing. I think I can apply that in this. Oh, it's amazing. Like, hammock, hammock. Business purchase. OK. Number four, start simple, build up. Have you heard the terms mobile first? I'm sure it's, that's, again, another buzzword. But it's actually, there's some, a lot of truth to that. So you want to start simple, and then you can go crazy after that. <laughs> Just so you know, Milwaukee's known for our, our Bloody Marys. So if you ever come and visit, We'll, uh, we'll go, we'll go and uh, find some Bloody Marys. There's one actually with a full chicken in it. I'm not even kidding. Um, but anyway, so think about mobile first, because that's going to be your most relevant content, your most, um, the, the most important things. And then you can go crazy with your bells and whistles. Remember the sticky notes planning out things? This really fits into this uh, organizing. So really organize your things instead of just like sweeping it under the carpet. Um, there's this, uh, this trick that like developers like to do is display none, which just literally hides everything. But all of the stuff is still there. And it just clutters the code. It's confusing to develop. 
And I mean, if you do a, a good enough job in your pre-planning and figure out this is the most important, so this is going to be the priority, and then this is kind of secondary and tertiary, like all of that organization, then you, might, you probably won't even need to hide anything because you'll have everything in a very semantic, a very useful and relevant way, doesn't matter what device you're on. And my little kind of 5.2 is unless you do this correctly, because one, if you hide things correctly, um, this comes to the fact because when something is just being loaded and hidden, it's still being loaded, um, you're still downloading onto your device. So if you don't have an unlimited data plan um, and you're giving someone these gigantic photos and now all of a sudden they're going over there, first off, it's slow to load, and secondly, there's um, there, all of a sudden they get, you know, my, why did I go over my data rate? Because I just went to this website that had this little information, but it loads all this and just hides it. So there's actually a way to do this on the server. So here's a little bit of code and nerdy jargon, um, but it's called RES. Where did I, I put that? It's um, responsive design with server-side components. So basically, it's instead of doing the magic in, the, uh, in those media in the CSS, it's actually doing it you know, in PHP on your server. So these are just some links. Again, these will be um, online, so you can actually take a look at these. But I've actually utilized um, this one, this mobile detect on my own websites. And what that does is it actually pre-checks if they're on a device, a mobile device, a tablet, or a desktop. And then I can do a conditional statement in my code that says, all right, um, if it's mobile, then just print this stuff. And if it's not, then you load all the things. So that's, that's one way that things can be hidden um, correctly. This is something that, especially working with clients, number six, presenting your styles instead of an actual page. Because there's so much that changes when it comes to designing for all of the devices, and not only that, is that the devices are constantly changing. The sizes are constantly changing. So you can take and make a Photoshop document and say, this is how your website will look on a desktop. And then this is a, how this will look like on a, a tablet in landscape mode. And this is how it's going to look like in a tablet in portrait mode. And you can tell this is actually taking a lot of time, right? Very inefficient. So instead, think more um, modularly. Think in something like, the, like a style sheet or like a style guide. So style ties, tiles is, a, is one of the more, more popular ones where you put together like a template, and it says, this is what a button's going to look like. Here are the main colors. Here's the primary color. Here are, here's the font that you will be using or that, that I propose on using on the site. Um, this is even just like the size of the text. Here is an example paragraph, and here's an example image. And then, you know, OK, I, I get that the style, and I understand that. Then you start doing the actual, you know, the designing in the browser. Again, that's another kind of buzzword. But it allows you to then just start writing the code and putting those design elements into it so that then the client can see, oh, that's how it's going to look like on mobile, and that's how it's going to look like. You know, It saves a lot of time um, and a lot of heartache <sighs> because it's, it's, really, it's really difficult to try to explain to a non-visual person. I'm sure some people are non-visual people here that like, oh, just imagine that this is going to go from three columns to one column. I mean, there's fewer, few, few people that can do that. This one is a big one for me, like seven. Remember, there's no hover uh, on mobile. Because there's a lot of times when, especially in older 
um, designs where you could have like these links. They were almost like hidden, but then you hovered over it and they're like magic happens. And it's like, oh, it's so cute. It's so wonderful. But you know, remember, there is no hover on mobile. So making things very identifiable. Here's a giant button. This is something you can click on. You know, people like clicking on buttons and it's easier to click on a mobile because you have a larger space to actually click on. So you know, being kind of really obvious with things in your, in that design. Eight, focus. Well, okay, uh, <laughs> there, see? Just, you know, declutter, not only in your design, you know, doing simple, but declutter just your workspace and you're just, don't work on multiple projects at a time. It just gets jumbled. There's, it's, I've tried it, it's terrible. Just focus on one, just get into that mindset. It's really going to help you focus. It's really going to help the outcome of your product. It's just going to be, and, and you'll be happier. Remember hammocks? Remember? OK. <laughs> Nine, push back. Um, there's, you know, they say the customer's always right. Well, they're, they're right or they're wrong. Like, Remember that if you're the professional, you're the one that knows about responsive design. You know about color theory, or you know about this code thing. You know about this. The client doesn't necessarily know that. Um, so push back with and find out what's behind those requests. Um, you want to make sure you highlight whatever their initial goals, which you find out you know, when you're talking. You're like, OK, this is the goal. I want to reach these this demographic, and I want to do this, this message, or I want them to do this thing. I want them to contact me. All right, that's your initial goal. Now, here is the solution. This is why this solves this problem. And profit, OK. But no, really, it's OK to say no, because you have the best interests of the demographic. Remember that the person designing it even the person okaying the design is not necessarily who it is intended for. So think in that mindset instead of, oh, I like this. No, does, you might not be the demographic. 10, this one's so hard. Um, these are actually my parents, and now they both have smartphones. They're both on Facebook <laughs> and Twitter and Foursquare. I'm like, how does this happen? It's, it's amazing, but anyway. Hardest thing for any designer, developer. Just let someone use your website, your product, anything, and you don't help them. Oh, that's so hard. Because you just want to like, oh, nope. But you will learn so much from that. I mean, give it to someone who is like, oh, I'm not really a computer person. Like, perfect. You are who I want to, to use this and see if you can do that. Like. Um, I would have my grandpa look at my website. If he had to bring out his uh, reading glasses, then I was like, oh, I need to change that design. You know, because that is, I, I, I don't want people to be, I want it hard to read. You don't want it, you want to make it easy. You want your message to come through and not be hindered by the technology or the design. Okay, but I said 10, this one goes to 11 though. <laughs> Keep learning. Like, there are so many resources that you can uh, find online. The, these trends are always changing. I, I, get, uh, I get asked a lot with, um, you know, like, oh, whatever the trend is, fill in the blank, uh, with flat design, because flat design is very in right now. You know, like, oh, you know, what do you think the next trend is? Whatever you want. I actually gained the most success by breaking all of the rules, just to see, just to learn and see what happens after that. You know, I was doing uh, corporate websites where everything was corporate blue, two different shades of corporate blue. And the logo was on the top right, and then the search was in the top left, and the, the button said go. It always had to say go. It couldn't say search because people might click. You know, there was all of these different things. Um, where they said, you know, they said these are your your standards. These are the you know these standards that you need. Yeah. So, and I was like, I left that job and I was like, ah, two colors. No, I'm gonna use all of the colors. Let's see what happens. The navigation in the top is a nice line. I was like, no, I'm gonna put it in a semicircle. 
logo top left. No, I'm gonna put it in the bottom right, you know, just because. But, you know, it was great. It felt freeing to break the rules. Maybe some of the things didn't work, but I learned some really cool things. I was like, wow, this actually gained a lot of attention because of X, Y, Z, because it broke all the rules. Um, so yeah, just keep learning. There's a bunch of different um, sources online that, uh, including the Google. Um, this one right here, um, especially when you're first, you know, first starting out with responsive, um, this is responsive. Uh, by Brad Frost. He has so many different articles and tutorials and examples and stuff. And it's actually kind of fascinating all of the things that you can do with responsive design. So, and again, mobile best practices, same thing. Like, but you know, try them out and then try breaking them. See what happens. Um, and then some different uh, places where you can get articles, different examples, CSS tricks. Um, I, this is how I learned how to code is basically going through these sites and seeing, oh, that's really cool. All right, I want to try that. So I take little bits and pieces of things and try to put them in my designs and uh, see how it worked out. So that is there's my, there's my education right there. Do you have any questions? I really want this to be more of an interactive thing. So please, I want, I want to hear all of the, the questions. Yes. Yes. How do you compare um, responsive design versus um, uh, plugins that uh, attempt to? Oh yeah, to like a mobile yeah. So. Yeah yeah. So the plugins that will change your website into like a different mobile design is that correct? You know it'll look yeah. Um, versus a responsive design. You know, I have used those plugins in the past, but I don't prefer them. Um, it's a good quick solution if you want to, you know, like you had like this old website and then theme that you really just wanted to like quickly make responsive or mobile. Um, the problem is that uh, I'm, I'm a designer, so a lot has to do for me with the branding. So you're not, you, everything on your website, not just the content, but the design, the colors, the layout, everything should represent your company, your organization. It's all sending the message of who you are. So for me, I think, now if I get a completely different experience when I'm on this device versus when I'm on my desktop, um, I don't necessarily make that connection. You know, yes, your content might be the same, the title might be the same, the domain is the same, but I get this disjointed experience. So it's all about kind of that user experience and if you're connecting with them. So, um, so I do prefer just having a responsive site. It's also nice because it, um, it's less code. Um, some of those responsive uh, or some of those plugins, mobile plugins, just add an extra layer to it which um, can slow things down as well. But I, I prefer just a responsive design. It just seems more congruent, uh, just nicer. Yes? Probably going to sound like a really stupid question. No stupid questions. Not a CSS expert. Yeah. So what, what's sort of the, where does a fluid layout and, and a responsive design, like with lots of great points, begin? Like, like how do you kind of manage that? Like, do you put a whole bunch of breakpoints on a different style sheet, or how you, do you do it? You know, it's so funny because, like, I have done through so many of these different, I've gone through this whole process where I did so many different breakpoints, like, you know, 480, you know, and then whatever, 6, whatever. Mm -hmm. But now they're constantly changing, and now even with, like, retina devices, like, yeah. there's, there's all that kind of gray area. So I've started to do more where I still have kind of breakpoints, major breakpoints, but I do more a lot in the fluid, you know, thing because there's so much middle ground. Not only do you have how, you know, wide and tall that devices are, but you can have a big monitor and just have your your web page in is like very tiny. So there's all of those, you know, pixels in between the breakpoints that you um, have to kind of be mindful of. So I've just kind of started to get more into that fluid mindset of, okay, this actually, you know, from here to here, like, 
you know, two columns looks great, you know. And then I just kind of, all right, now in here I like this has to be a breakpoint because you know now it's breaking the the navigation or something like that. But a, a combination of both is really how I approach what it now. Well, for mobile, I usually still end up doing like a four, 480 or something like that. Um, and then I usually, I'll do some like a tablet uh, sometimes, uh, depending on how complex the design is. I think around 700, 800, something like that. Um, I actually also love designing responsively upwards because of some, like, there's such a like wide range now. Like some people just are going smaller and smaller. Other people are going bigger and bigger. So like I want my site to like, if they have like this huge monitor that I don't, my website isn't this big and there's all this blank space. So I also think, exactly. And I also think in, in um, expanding on larger devices as well. So then I usually do something like, I don't know, 13, 1300 or something like that. So, and it changes every time depending on the design. So I, yeah. Yes, back there. Um, about what you just said, if you have a very, very big screen and the site looks really small in there, yeah. do you say you have a breakpoint of like 2,000 or square feet, or do you like scale it up somehow? Or? Sometimes I do, yeah. Like I'll have like a larger breakpoint, like 1,500 or something. Because I have a 30 inch monitor, so like I like to have things large and I like big pictures because I'm a visual person. Um, but yeah, like that's not as crucial as as having the the, the smaller breakpoints because sometimes you know having like a good texture background like makes it not feel so empty or whatever. But yeah, I usually will have some sort of like maybe 1,200, 1,500, 1,700. I don't know whatever thing that will go. And then I use then I like to use percentages so that it doesn't go all the way because the line length is going to be crazy. Um, but then and keep it kind of some padding in there as well. So you're adding columns as it gets really wide. Yeah, and with some of the newer um, uh, like CSS three things with columns, it makes columns used to be just awful. Like because there was no easy way to do columns, um, and even just having something where you had two divs next to each other like having the bottoms line up was like impossible, you know. Um, but now with Flexbox, which is now widely supported, there's a lot of these kind of different CSS tricks. Um, and CSS tricks will actually have, they have a lot on Flexbox, which is actually really good for responsive design because it allows you to like, all right, you know, now it's like four columns. And it just like, it's just easy, a little one code thing, whatever, in the CSS. So it's really easy now to do. Yes. How do you deal with clients who ask you to make the, the website look responsive on an odd device, for example, BlackBerry Passport, which has a huge number of pixels, but is in a small form factor? Yeah, you know, designing for kind of odd devices, um, I, again, I just kind of go with, well, keeping things like one column, keeping things really simple, I find that translates really well to most devices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I basically I'll, I'll do something like fluid, like it'll be it max width of ninety percent, okay. so like it'll absolutely be within that and still have some padding on the sides for scrolling because, you know, if you it doesn't have a touch screen or is it all yes. okay? I, I I need more. See, I need more devices. I think that's what you know. <laughs> yes, you. I I found an approach that different than the responsive to device sizes, mm -hmm. but rather writing responsive to content. Mm. So that you choose your breakpoints not based on devices, but rather based on the content you've got. This makes most of the grid systems happen. Mm -hmm. But uh, because they're almost all, or I want a breakpoint mm -hmm. of 720. Mm -hmm. And often what will happen is you've got a piece of text or a picture that really looks good down to about 810. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be good to have a breakpoint at uh, 720 or 768. Yeah. So you 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 do breakpoints around content. Around is that content, correct? Yeah. Content-driven breakpoints, and you can also set your breakpoints in M's, which will answer this your is, weird devices. With yeah. Yeah. Design. I I do a lot of measurements in M's, and for that's um, it, it's based on your font size. Yeah. So, um, so it, it's relative to that. So, and I actually like doing things in in M's instead of pixels, 
because of, um, I know that now modern browsers, when you resize um, the text, it will resize everything, but it wasn't al that always wasn't the case. So I, if you design in M's and your font size gets larger, then the, the whole site gets you know, a little bit larger. So I still kind of stick to that, yeah, designing in M's so that it is, a, you, know, the, you know, if someone has their screen size or font size to extra large, then it's, everything's gonna follow form. Yes. What's my uh, what's my process? What like when do you decide what which is better? When do I decide which is better for just like a plain a mobile site, a separate mobile, mobile site versus, versus responsive? Versus like, what are your considerations? Um, I my theory. Well, I actually always lean towards just doing a responsive site, um, and the reason being is um, th if you look at the stats right now. The, like, there was this like, oh, there was only 20% that was on mobile only. And then there was like, there, it's like skyrocketed past, you know, the mobile usage is now already past desktop usage. And to consider um, that there are house, households and, and people that only have a mobile device and don't have a desktop computer. So serving up different content provides a different experience. Like, and I, I get frustrated, so I want to do, I know I've been to this website on my desktop, and I know I can buy this uh, T-shirt, okay? And now, if I'm you know, in bed and I want to buy that T-shirt, like, I expect the same functionality and the same experience, or else I just get frustrated and flustered, you know? So, you know, again, that kind of goes with the hiding information um, by making a completely separate site. You know, having something responsive, you only have to manage one set of data. If that's a case, you know, if you have actually two sites on like different, you know, uh, different WordPress installs, for example, you know, and serving up different content, and you change something, you have to change it everywhere. Or, um, you know, now you change something on, you know, one, then you have to change it in the other. Like, so separating them almost completely, I feel, is just really. Um, unless it's a completely different purpose or a completely different market or different content, um, keeping it responsive just keeps it really clean and simple, easy to maintain, and gives you a unified experience for your users. Yes? To that point, there's actually a bit of a, there's actually a, a pushback against a separate mobile site that we have not, simply because um, from a like say, for from from our perspective, as site builders, when we have to put the content in, like just have, like for example, if you have that m dot website and a desktop website, just having to push two separate or uh, kinds of content, it's yeah. just gonna be a uh, it's just gonna be a content governance nightmare. So, <laughs> so content so. governance nightmare. I like that. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It's a natural term. That's, that's, that's the technical term. That's good. Awesome. Yes, you. Okay, you mentioned how when you are presenting to your clients, you give them this uh, style guide. Yes. My clients would look at that and go, where's my site? Mm -hmm. They want to see the layout. They want to see where their menu is. Like, I, I don't really get that that would actually fly. I see where I would get that yep. when I'm looking at a template and I'm looking and I'm, I'm choosing my template design and I want to see yeah. how the buttons look and yep. how you know things sliders look. But to say, I just don't, I have to give them a wireframe. I have to give them a desktop and a mobile. And I do it very simply and I don't even know what my pixel width is. I just do a big pixel width and I do a narrow pixel width. Yeah. And I just show it to them and I say, this is kind of what you're going for, right? Yeah. Like, I don't, so yeah, to the point with the, the style, presenting the styles for the clients, um, and yes, I, I've gotten that too, where they're like, I, I, don't, I don't understand what this is, but a lot of it has to do with, you know, some of the education. I do sometimes will do like a header on a desktop, you know, something or like kind of maybe the home page, so that if they're not visual people, you know, to say, oh yeah, this is going to be that and that's going to be that, but just to kind of give them, get them to sign off on it. But going through the, um, the iterations of all of the different, you know, widths and all of the different things, um, that it's a lot, it, it's, 
it is still a hard sell, I'll admit, because I know some clients are very, they very much want to see, you know, what it's going to look like and exactly like that. The danger is that if it looks anything different than that once it's programmed, they might, you know, like, oh, well, why is it one column all of a sudden? You know, like, just kind of trying to, like, educate. A lot of what I do is trying to gain the trust of the client so that I say, I understand, like, here's kind of an initial design so that I hope that I am um, successfully portraying your mission and your culture. Um, then also saying, but let me know, I, I can take this and run with it because I know all of the different, like, the different things about mobile that I'll need to change and all of these different things that they don't need to worry about. So presenting that and kind of educating on this is the rest of the site. Like this is what it's going to be. But pieces are going to move around. So sometimes there is that pushback. But like really trying to like nail it and drive that home that this is a fluid thing. So that's why that these pieces are like important. That okay, you understand that this is a call to action. So that any time there's going to be a call to action, it's going to look like that. But it's going to maybe be in a different place on mobile versus on your desktop. Um, so a lot of it's education, a lot of it's just talking back and forth, um, and then sometimes a, 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 a good, uh, here's, here's one design, but here's the rest is a style guide. Uh, co compromise in that way. Yes? Can you talk a So, so with the style tiles, um, with that example, that's actually just one example, and it's it's just a way of um, kind of outlining what a, a like a style guide would look like. You can you can use that. I've used that template sometimes, but sometimes I haven't. Like I've just completely gone um, and used a different template completely. Um, the the main jux of it is that you are presenting the different elements and what the style is going to look like. So like, um, you know, just this is what a paragraph of text is going to look like. And here's uh, on the background. So you can see the colors and the, how readable it is. Um, so you can form, you know, the style tiles, the website, they have a template you can download that you can, that can start you off. But they also encourage you to make it your own. If there is something that, you know, is, uh, different about that design, like contact forms or something, something that that client really cares about. Um, style that out, but just as, a, as an element. Don't, you know, you can put it in the whole thing later on, the whole design, but style out that element especially and say, this is what a form will look like. So um, it's just a way of getting started with, with, the, with the design. They have, I think even a photo, they have a Photoshop um, document that you can download. Yes, we have nodding. So, yeah, it's been a while since I visited the site. Yes, you in the back. Think about uh, those little menus, hamburger menus. Oh, hamburger menus. How do you deal with uh, menus? Seem to be the really big challenge in resizing questions. Menus. Menus are definitely a, a big issue when it comes to responsive. A lot of the studies I read are that people just still don't understand what that hamburger menu is. You know, the hamburger, the three three lines. So many sites use that as their primary like indication that this is a menu. And still, so many people don't understand what it means. Um, so I think that's actually um, a, a really good point, because I feel we're just scraping the surface on um, getting to successful ways of navigation through a mobile, uh, mobile site. Uh, this example um, I heard many years ago um, at South by Southwest, they were saying, we're, we're just in the infancy stage of web design. Think about when, um, when movies were still, like films were just developed. And before that, they just had plays. So they had you know, just props, and they did you know, plays. So the first moving pictures, movies, looked like plays for the most part. So 
I still feel like we're applying our knowledge of the web from desktop views to and just try, kind of trying to fit it into a mobile device. I don't think we're there yet. So um, that's one of those things where I want people to break the rules and see if we can find a really great solution for the menu, mobile menu stuff. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Pri prioritize it and just show the most. I mean, that's 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 you know one one method. Um, I don't know how I feel about if there was more menu items that they just like were hanging off somewhere. You know, like where's my contact form? I have no idea. Like it wasn't the high priority, so I don't know how to get to it. Um, but you know, I really think that at least they're going somewhere with that that prioritize it. Um, so maybe the the content underneath the menu is the navigation, like. Why, why does it have to be a, a slideshow? Don't, don't get me started on that one. Um, but you know, like why can't that actually be something clickable so that they're going through that process, or bring them through that journey as opposed to like, here's a bunch of stuff, figure it out. You know, like no, here, like see about us, see this, all this stuff. So um, yeah, prioritizing, but let's, you know, let's break some rules and see what kind of cool navigation through menu we can, you know, mobile we can get. Yes, you. Mm -hmm. So uh, adjustments to different phone platforms, and that's where kind of keeping it simple and not doing a lot of the bells and whistles, then you don't run into a lot of those things. When it starts to get, you know, like pixels and, you know, this and that, then I think you're over designing. Like it's one of those things, and I've totally run into that where I'm like, this curved edge doesn't line up to this on Firefox, but it does in, in Safari, but then it doesn't in Chrome, and then it's on the other side. Of, like, it's, it's really weird. So um, leaving a little bit more um, room for error and not like over designing it, making the little, um, uh, little, little, little fun, fun things just be you know, not so um, crucial. Like these little design, you know, surprises are not crucial that they have to line up perfectly because there's really still no big solution to all of the different browsers and all the different devices. And if you tried, you would go insane because there's hundreds and thousands. So, um, so yes, keeping it simple. Then you run into those very few things, and then those little things. Then it's then you have to kind of make the design de design decision. How important is it? To, to this whatever thing, so that's what I found. Maybe, yeah. Anyone else? Yes. Do you uh, use SVGs? I love SVGs. I also hate them. Um, so for everyone, uh, SVGs are scalable vector graphics, um, which I you know I do have a love hate relationship. I use them a lot. Um, and it, because, especially as from the design background, I was always frustrated with, you know, taking from like something from Illustrator, a beautiful, like, you know, detailed, very round and, you know, flowy thing, and then having to put it into pixels so it was all like little boxes. And I, I just had this kind of, it just made me die a little inside. So having the ability to have vector graphics. Um, readable from your browsers so that displays and it's displays so beautiful on desktop to mobile to retina display to whatever is next it's because it's actually drawing in the browser like the curve as opposed to all the little pixels and stuff so I love them they're very hard to work with that's a whole other talk um, but I absolutely agree that those are a, a good design decision there's actually some really great um, already kind of pre-packaged SVG icon packages. Iconic um, is one of them. 
Um, I'll, I'll tweet some of those out later on you know, at TAP. So, like, um, but yeah, like there's some that make it really easy. So it's on the cusp of being very accessible. It's still very hard, though, because they don't scale like images do. You can't just say, oh, we're going to make this 500 pixels wide. You know, it's, it's a little bit more complex than that. So, but. One size does not fit all. Yes. And Yes. Which I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the very old saying, you know, one size does not fit all. One size does not fit all. You take this device, this device, etc. Yeah. And I understand exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, and there is a reason and purpose for doing that, right? Yeah. Um, the disadvantages and the negatives of having everything same mm -hmm. are fairly significant actually mm -hmm. because the world's population is hugely diverse. Oh yeah, absolutely. Not just culture and yep. language, but otherwise. Yep. And if you have a one size fits all from the internet, which is sort of like we can call it that semi global sort of thing, because most people don't have that actually. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yep. Eventually they will. Yep. Um, you're looking at a design element purpose of to keep it simple and mm -hmm. standard mm -hmm. material for making effective design. And I think it might be good to rethink because making something that satisfies what you think is your client at this time will not satisfy this client or the purpose for which they want a one-size-fits-all foundation for their advertising, publicity campaign, whatever and whatever device mm -hmm. it is two months, a year, next week. Mm -hmm. So and especially with ironically the speed at which the technology oh, yeah. is working right now. Mm -hmm. How would you respond to that? Well, um, I actually I agree with you on on a lot of those things because it is it, it's really hard um, to satisfy everyone. Um, and because the the World Wide Web is the World Wide Web, it is international um, you know, I, I tell people like, well, color theory. You know, you think about what a color means to um, what it means to you, but it's going to mean diff something different to someone else somewhere else in the world, and, and that's something that you know I wouldn't even consider that being responsive, but something like geolocated, you know, design. You know, because now we have the technology to be able to detect where in the world you are and then to be able to deliver content that way. So I think, I mean, I really do think that this is actually where the web is going because there is so much that follows you around. Um, just think about Google. Like you look up something on Amazon and all of a sudden Google has ads for some, like it's scary how much that technology knows about you and all of this stuff. So, I mean, I really think that that is probably, that's gonna be a big thing in the future is to be able to deliver different content um, depending on that. Uh, whether or not that is, you know, web design or if that's just, if that's something completely different. But, yeah. I think that's great. Oh, yes. Oh, One more. To say in response to that, isn't that question or that, isn't that answered by style sheets themselves? The ability to serve up different styles to, I mean, the idea of, you know, mm -hmm. um, content from, Yeah. 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 Absolutely. The style sheets really do determine all of that stuff. But I think even in deeper of like you know what the content or even the navigation and how the experience is can completely change. That's a completely different site. You know to be able to like you know the navigation is completely different. The content, the focus is different. Um, so I think that's completely. Um, I think that's another a whole other talk. But um, but yeah, you're you're absolutely right. So. No, but thank you for bringing that up because it, it is something that I think about a lot is that it does change so fast. And so this is why, you know, you know, well, thinking about not only uh, planning from now, but also for the future is really hard. So yep. Yeah. Yep. Fair enough. Let's take that as a given. Mm -hmm. Then you have choices. Yes. And the choices are very prominently mm -hmm. 
visible and accessible and everything else. Yeah. And that's the way to think. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I like that. That's nice. Go. All right. I think I am out of time. So thank you so much. Thank you.